Hey Brainiacs, welcome back to the channel. As our community here grows, I wanna thank each and every one of you for your support. For those who aren't subscribed, I invite you to join our channel and give a like if you appreciate what we're doing. I know many of you out there have dreams of becoming neurosurgeons yourselves, but how do you actually make this happen? I'd like to gear today's video toward US medical students considering a career in neurosurgery and highlight the traits I've consistently seen among individuals who succeed in the match, become strong residents, and thrive as attending neurosurgeons. I've mentored high school students, pre-meds in college, and medical students at all phases, and I know the anxiety and uncertainty that can surround the decision to pursue neurosurgery. Unlike the seemingly endless schooling we go through, preparing for residency is the final step toward achieving your actual career. Once you become a resident, the preparation and anticipation ends, you're becoming a neurosurgeon for real. But is there really a playbook for how to match? Is it all about test scores, publications, knowing all the answers on rounds, avoiding air knots? If you know neurosurgery is for you, then listen up, you won't wanna miss this. Let's assume you've made your final decision, considered the pros and cons, and know in your heart that you want to try to match into neurosurgery. Welcome to the coolest and most innovative field in medicine. It's normal to feel nervous and uncertain about neurosurgery residency, but hopefully your excitement and ambition pushes you through any insecurity and reminds you of the incredible privilege it is to become a neurosurgeon. We all want the best training possible and depend on residency to develop the skills we'll need to become confident and competent surgeons. But how can you know in advance what it takes to succeed? Are there any skills or habits that you can develop as a medical student to maximize your chances of matching? Let's discuss what I consider to be the five most important traits of medical students destined for success in neurosurgery. Number one, dedication. Sometimes it feels like I have a turnstile of students coming into my office every week interested in neurosurgery. Interest is one thing, but dedication is a whole nother. Personally, I'd love nothing more than to be a better neurosurgeon, husband, father, friend, colleague, you name it. Who wouldn't want to be an astronaut, celebrity, Nobel Prize winner? Wanting to become a neurosurgeon is the first step, but dedicating yourself to the process, start to finish, is the first thing I look for in successful medical students. I want to see you walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So come to the operating room and see our surgeries up close. Shadow us in clinic, round in the hospital. See what the job actually involves. Don't just buy into the hype of what you think neurosurgery is. And if it feels right, then invest your time and energy into being part of our community. Come to Grand Rounds, research meetings, local and national conferences and meetings, work on a research project, whether in the clinic or lab, and be sure to finish it. Neurosurgeons love finishers. We used to talk about this back when I was a resident. We all knew the medical students who had the eye of the tiger, as we used to call it, a self-motivated ambition and drive to get things done. It doesn't matter how big or small the task was, these were the students we could count on. Pre-rounding on 30 patients, volunteering to see consults, getting notes done efficiently, writing grants, publishing papers, you name it, they would get it done. Neurosurgeons are busy people. The further you get in your career, the less time you have for handholding. Self-motivated people dedicated to solving problems and completing complex tasks already have the foundation for success in neurosurgery because many of our operations demand the same skills. If you're my medical student, don't try to impress me or make me happy because believe me, we can always tell who's putting on a show. I want you to prove to yourself that you have what it takes to be a neurosurgeon, to give 110% and to throw yourself into the experience completely. Number two, humility. True success in neurosurgery comes from remaining humble and open to criticism. No one is born a neurosurgeon. We're all in training in one form or another and we all have room to grow better. Would you rather teach someone humble and eager to learn or someone with a massive ego convinced they have it all figured out? Humility may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of neurosurgeons, but some of the most successful chairmen, clinician scientists, and technically gifted surgeons I've met were among the most humble. When you know you don't know it all, it makes it much easier to grow and mature. Everyone makes mistakes. The problem arises when those mistakes repeat themselves. Have the humility and insight to approach neurosurgery with an open mind for constructive criticism and realize it will only make you better and stronger and ultimately benefit your patients. And don't forget that this is really about them. Your ego shouldn't get in the way of that. Number three, curiosity. Curiosity tends to be an underappreciated strength in students, but one I appreciate more and more as time passes. With curiosity comes motivation. And believe me when I say that becoming a neurosurgeon takes a lot of motivation. I study anatomy every day, read papers, do my own research, mentor and receive mentorship, collaborate with other scientists, 
and pick my colleagues' brains for advice. I look for students with a similar intellectual curiosity and desire to grow and learn. We operate on the most mysterious organ we have, with unanswered questions about everything from the way our neurons are wired together into one giant connectome to the nature of consciousness itself. If the nature of the organ you're operating on spans both the physical and metaphysical, I challenge you not to approach neurosurgery with a sense of awe and curiosity. And that's what separates the good from the truly great students. Curiosity is an end in and of itself. Those who are curious seek answers because that intellectual exploration is itself satisfying, not just because they want an answer. The incredibly difficult diseases we treat in neurosurgery demand bold thinking and novel ideas, and dedicating yourself to curiosity and the spirit of learning will serve you well. Volunteer to give a short talk on a topic that came up during rounds, review and share some relevant anatomy to a recent surgery, propose a research topic with a mentor, or seek advice from residents and attendings. I love an inquisitive mind. It's a trait you'll want and need throughout your career. Number four, attention to detail. When we were chief residents, one of my co-residents and I used to joke that we could tell how good a surgeon was just by how wrinkled their shirt was and how crisply their tie was knotted. And there is an element of truth to it. The little things can add up, not only your appearance, but your attitude, language, and behavior become part of your reputation. Make sure your reputation includes attention to detail. I want perfectionists. I want students always looking to do a better job. We juggle a ton of patients, complex clinical questions, stressful operations, and long work hours with high pressure and little room for error. If you're lacking attention to detail, I've already lost hope you'll develop an appetite for perfectionism during residency training. Trust is built on consistent excellence, and you can't have either if you're not meticulous in everything you do. Know the patients on your service inside and out, read up on surgeries or conditions beforehand, understand indications, complications, and surgical goals. Review clinic lists beforehand and take notes on patients before seeing them. The more you know about our patients and the conditions they have, the more I'll trust you to have the dedication and curiosity I look for when it's time to learn how to actually operate. That attention to detail is particularly critical to developing proficient technical skills. Number five, professionalism. This is an enormous topic that probably deserves its own video, but hopefully this goes without saying. Professionalism encompasses all aspects of what we do as doctors. Remember our Hippocratic Oath and you'll be on the right path. Honesty, clear communication, ethical and moral behavior, placing patients first, a good attitude, treating others with respect, and staying cool under pressure are qualities you should emulate early on as a medical student. Showing up to my clinic late, in tennis shoes, with a dirty white coat, and no clue about which patients we're gonna see is the quickest way to get booted out. Imagine the type of doctor you'd like to encounter if you were a patient facing brain surgery. Would you want someone dismissive, rumpled, scatterbrained, and unable to explain themselves well? Of course you wouldn't. Be the neurosurgeon you would want treating you. To my students and trainees in waiting, I hope you found this helpful and that it gives you some direction in your career. Let me know what you think I've missed and what traits you think really matter in the comments below. I love hearing your thoughts and it's the best way to demonstrate your support for our growing Brainiac community. So keep an open mind and I'll see you next time.